it's Holly here from Your Past is a Gift. Okay, so in this video, I wanted to share how we get into certain patterns in our lives and we miss most of it. <laughs> okay, we miss most of what's happening right here, right now, because we let the mind run things for us. Okay, we don't stop. We don't stop to just be in the moment. So, what happened was when I started teaching piano as a piano teacher, we get paid every term, which is every three months. Okay, a student will pay for the whole 10 lessons in one go, and then we've got four terms in a year here in Australia. And so, at the beginning of each term, it was wonderful because all the money was coming in, right? That's at the beginning of every three months. So the first four weeks, you had all this money coming in, okay, to pay for the lessons, which you then had to manage because you weren't going to get any payments for another, you know, until every three months happened. So that covered the 10, to 10 weeks and then you got two weeks school holidays. But what happened was, in my mind, I got into this pattern, okay, that you'd have this money coming in for those first four weeks, wonderful. We've got all this stuff that we can do with it, right? pay the bills, pay this, pay that, do stuff, right, with the money. And then there'd be two months after those four weeks of everybody paying what they had to pay, there'd be two months where I'd just spend those two months wishing for the next term, for when the next bunch of money was going to come in and then we could do all this stuff all over again. So I'd only have three or four weeks of money coming in that I was enjoying that this money was coming in, but then there was this you know this thought of lack that it was going to run out and of course for two months there was no money you know and then I'd be already in my mind I'd already be waiting for when the next payments were going to come so there were two months out of every three months that I was skipping in my mind I was always on to when the next payment was going to be so my mind in January was happy because that's when all the payments were happen happening then in April I was happy because that's when all the payments were happening but the two months in between I was miserable because there was no money coming in for me you know and so I felt like the, those two months were wasted I just wanted to get to the next payment you know and then that started to go long term because then it wasn't just okay I'm going from January to April to July to uh, October whenever the next one was okay the four payments of the year that come in for me but then it started to happen year to year because each year started to feel the same like nothing was changing nothing was it was the same year for me for many years for me it felt like I was living the same year over and over and over and I would get to New Year's Eve always wishing that the next year was going to be better than the one I'd already been through so my mind was always projected into the future was always going to be better the future the next year or in the next three months when the money comes in again in the next three months when the money comes in again but it was never here like I'd it just now I think of it and I just think it's just crazy that we live like that how many of us live like that you know that on in, in sometime in the future it's going to be better than what it is right now. So, you know, if you're one of these people that's always living in the future and you're constantly missing what's happening right here in front of you now, just stop. Just stop. Because it is, it's like we're on this little merry-go-round that we can't get off. This merry-go-round of suffering and misery <laughs> that we've hopped onto where there is no real joy. You know, I was one of these compulsive buyers that when the money came in, I'd go out and buy stuff because whatever stuff I was going to get was going to make me happy. And whether it's a handbag or a pair of shoes or whatever it was, it's great for a few weeks. Never lasted more than that. It wasn't a, a, an everlasting joy that, oh, I love that handbag. And I still love that handbag. <laughs> it was just so fleeting joy you got out of whatever it is that you bought it was so fleeting and the same with achievements any courses I've done that I thought oh when I get that I'm 
going to be, I'm going to be such, so much better than what I am now. I'm going to be so joyful and I'm going to be all these things. And that's never happened either. You know, because you're still the same person inside. Whatever you've carried of you're not being worthy or you're not being good enough or whatever it was that you decided, you're still carrying that. That's not going to change until you look at it. It's not going to change. So you really have to stop and look at your life today. You're constantly living in the future and the future's always better. But even when that future comes, you're happy for two minutes and then it's gone. nothing I can promise you from everything I've experienced you know the mind will constantly keep you fooled thinking that yes that thing in the future is going to make you happy now after the meltdown I had three weeks ago I realized you know my mind keeps telling me that there's a lack of money and my mind you know my whole adult life there's a lack of money there's not enough money all these thoughts of lack but like I said in a previous video, I've never had a day without food. I've always had food. I've always had shelter. I've always had clothes. I've never needed anything material or anything to keep me strong and healthy in my life. That I should believe at any point in my life that there is a lack of money at all. Or that there isn't enough money. There's no reason for me to believe that. And yet, up until two weeks to Three weeks ago when I had my meltdown, I still had those thoughts of worry. Of how was I going to pay for this bill that was coming up soon because the money wasn't there in the account. Because that's the other thing. When we get into these patterns, we sabotage ourselves. We spend the money somewhere else. And then the money's not there to pay for that bill. And then it builds up this worry and this stress and this... We do it to ourselves because we're already in these patterns that are created to make us feel bad. Yeah, I feel good when I go and buy this material thing that I've always wanted, and I want to have it now. It's great. But like I said before, how long does it last? A couple of weeks, a month maybe, maybe two months. It's not worth all the stress and worry and all the grief that you go through when the money's not there to pay the bill, when it's not there to pay for something that you need to pay for mind keeps deceiving you that you need this stuff it's going to make you happy and then it goes on the other side you know oh now you haven't got the money for that what are you going to do it's craziness it's insanity and yet we all do it and i don't know why why are we allowing the mind to run things why are we allowing this mindless chatter Especially when we understand that it's not ours. This lack of money that's stuck in my subconscious, it's not mine. It's not something that I've experienced. It's something that's being passed down by my parents, passed down by the church. That it's bad to have money, it's evil to have money, only evil people have it. But it's not mine. It's not my actual experience of what money is. So that's my experience. That's what I wanted to share. How funny it is. And also, you know, with money, there was this thing of... My parents always had this dread of paying tax. I don't know why, because you're helping the country, right? But the more money they made, the more tax they had to pay. But unfortunately, they never, ever thought to maybe put some aside, you know, each week maybe put a little bit aside, a little money aside, so that when tax time came, you had that money to pay for that massive bill. Because of course, by the time the year passed and we did the tax and that bill came, to them it was a huge bill. The only reason it was a huge bill was because they didn't put that money aside throughout the year, knowing that that's what it was gonna be. Okay, say for example, the tax bill was a thousand dollars, okay, which in those days, I'm talking 30 years ago, 40 years ago, whatever it was, 40 years ago, was a lot of money, okay, say it's a thousand dollars. So instead of putting that money aside each week, you work out what a thousand is over 52 weeks, okay, you put that little bit aside. When the tax comes, 
that thousand dollars is there. It's already sitting there. You've taken it out. It's not that much to take it out each week and have it ready at the end of the 52 weeks. You know, then to be hit with, now you've got to pay a thousand dollars from a bank account that's in debt. It's got zero in it. That was their experience. That was their reality. And funny enough, I carried that into my whole adult life. This dread of having to pay tax and trying to keep my wages, my, my piano lessons, always under a certain threshold so I didn't have to pay tax. Now how nuts is that? Not wanting to earn more so that I didn't have to pay for that. You know, the more I think of it as I was writing my book and I realised that in that moment and I wrote that down, I thought that's just insanity. That you don't allow yourself to make more money because you don't want to pay for this bill that's going to come. That's just insanity. It's so much easier to make more money to put the money aside. A little bit each week. You're not going to feel it. When the bill comes, the money's there. It's not that hard. It's not rocket science. But they're just patterns that we carry from what we grew up with. Because I copied that exactly as it was done when I was a child and I observed my parents doing it. I copied it for over 20 years in my adult life. It's just nuts. All right, my darlings, more to think about. And it's, mine is money. Okay, I keep going over the topic of money and it's not to relate to you with money, but yours might be relationships or yours might be health or whatever your area in your life that you feel isn't flowing for you then you need to look at how you copying patterns that you grew up with are you just copying what's happened in your home you're on autopilot you're not even thinking about why you're doing it you're just doing it does it make any sense is it even you know something that's valid today should you still be doing that think about it or can you let it go today can you let it go and just understand you don't need to be doing that anymore? All right, my darlings, you can let it flow. You can let it in. You can allow it to come into your life now. All right, my darlings, I love you guys. Remember to click like and subscribe below so you don't miss any of the messages and I'll see you in the next video.